Welcome to another PST tutorial, Spoon Fed Photoshop. I'm Gavin Steele, and I'm going to be taking you through Bill's great tutorial on creating a vector composite effect from a photo. You can find the tutorial over at the website. It's a brilliant step by step guide with links to all the necessary files. Now, I've asked for permission from iPhoto to get that image, a brilliant site for stock images. They also put a lot of their stock over at Stock Exchange, where I've got this particular picture from. So let's get started with the effect. I'm going to load up Photoshop and you can see I've got a picture of the girl's face on a black background. I've just used the pen tool to make a selection around her face and then deleted away this area here. Over my layers palette you can see I've got a couple of vector shapes in there already. I'm going to go through each of those with you as we progress through the tutorial but for now they're not visible. So the first step is to duplicate our source image and then we're going to desaturate that image to make it black and white. There we go. Now I'm going to apply a blur to that. So I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to go to blur and then I'm going to go to a lens blur. Here we go. Make sure you've got it set to transparency. A radius of 10 should be good enough and make sure the blade is on zero and rotation is on zero and everything else seems just about right there. I'm going to click on OK. We then need to save this. Let's file, save as, and I'm going to call this girl's face DIS and click on save. And that is going to be our displacement image. For more on displacements, if you go to the website and have a look at step, where is it? Here it is, step four. He brilliantly explains all the procedures involved with the displacement map. But I'm not going to go through that in detail with you. I'm just going to go through all the steps. So we've saved our displacement file. We need to make sure that we're not working with it anymore. So I'm going to open our girl's face image, click on open and I'm just going to close that one down. Okay, so make sure you're not working on your displacement image. Okay, now I didn't save that as a girl's face, so I'm just going to go through those steps one more time and desaturate. Okay, so I've got my displacement image and now I've got my girl's face image. The next step is to bring on our vector shapes. Okay, I've got some vectors loaded up here. I bought them from Go Media and they're Hulanders 2 vector pack. I've actually separated those images into the bits that I want to use in this tutorial. And you can see I've got them here. Okay, so the first step is we select the image, copy the image over to Photoshop and then paste it. And it's going to ask us how we want to actually paste that image and we're going to choose Smart Object. So click on OK. We can play around with the vector once it's in there. We can increase its size. And a tip that I've been given is to use tadpole shaped vectors for this particular effect. And they're vectors that start out fat and then end with the tail over the face. But I'm just going to throw a few of these on. Okay, you might want to put a few more on with your particular design. I'm just going to give you an idea in this tutorial. Okay, try and get them going in the same direction. Again, you might want to make them really big. Change the angle a little bit. And I'm just going to keep going over and keep copy and pasting these vector shapes. Make sure you're selecting them as smart objects. Okay, I'm just going to take a couple more. Resize that.
I'm going to paste that same one in again. Some of that coming down her neck. And just one final time, and then we can get started with the next section. Okay, so once you've got them in place, the next step is to actually displace these vector shapes using the image that we created earlier. So make sure you select the topmost vector shape, and we're going to displace that. So if I go to Filter, Distort, and then Displace, I'm going to make sure I've got my horizontal scale set to 10, the same with the vertical uh, scale, stretch to fit, and repeat the edge, and then click on OK. We then need to select the actual displacement file that we're going to be using, and we're going to be using the one we created at the start, so click on Open. We need to repeat that stage for each of the vectors. So you click on the next vector layer, come up to filter, and you'll see that it's already at the top of your list, and you can see the shortcut there. So I'm going to displace that, select the same file, and click on OK. This time I'm just going to use the shortcut, and I'll just speed things up a little bit as we go through. And you can see when it's done the displacement to the layer, creates that little white box underneath it. So it's going to take me a few seconds just to get all of these done. Okay, last one. Okay, so we've displaced all of those image images, all those vector shapes using our displacement image. I'm just going to double check I've got all of them done. Okay, the next step is to go down to our source image and we're going to copy this in between each of our vector layers. So you should have source image, vector, source image, vector, source image. Now if we keep using the same copy of this file, the, our final file size is going to end up really large. So I'm going to convert that into a smart object. And I've just come up to layer, smart objects and convert to a smart object. You'll hear and read more about smart objects as you go through each of the tutorials. Now that it's a smart object, I'm just going to drag it down to the new layer palette a few times. And remember we need one source image for each of our vector shapes. So I'm going to have a guess at about nine there, and then I'm going to start to drag them up. So there's our first one. And you see I'm going vector shape, source image, and vector shape. And that's the pattern that we need. I'm just clicking and dragging these up and then dropping them when they're in between the vector layers. Okay, I've just missed one there, but I'll make sure I get that. Okay, so you can see I've got source image, vector, source image, vector, source image, and so on. Brilliant. The next step with our source image is to create a clipping effect. Okay, so we're going to apply clipping to that actual image. So if I control click on my image and we go to create clipping mask, and again on the next layer. We're applying the clipping mask to the source images as we go down. 
And we shouldn't really see much happening until we get down to the last image. Okay, now you can start to see the effect taking shape over here. If I just make these layers invisible, you can see how that effect is starting to take shape. Now I've left this half of my background transparent just so you can see how the effect takes shape on a transparent background. So you can really put any background you want in there and mine is currently set to black. So if I just select that and just fill the rest of it. There we go. Just gonna grab the brush tool, make sure we get one of those areas. And you can really see this shape and the focus of the picture taking shape. If you have a look at the nose area here, that's not quite right. And the top area could do with some more, more work. I'm actually showing a lot more of the image than I would have liked to, but for the tutorial's sake, it's not actually that bad. The final step is adding a shadow to our actual vector shapes. Now we can do this really quickly by double clicking on the layer, coming down to drop shadow, make sure it's set to multiply, let's change this angle to 90 degrees, or well, actually let's do it at 140 degrees, let's set the opportunity to 90 and we want some large distances here, so let's go with 10, 10, and 20. And then click on OK. Once you've done that for the first one, we can control click and copy that layer style. We can come down and we can just paste it onto each of those vector layers. Okay, and you can really see that image starting to take shape now. With a little bit more time, a little bit more effort, you'll find that you can really make this style work for you and really stand out. There are some brilliant examples online. Go and check them out for some inspiration and then play around with the image. Now, I don't think the image is quite finished just yet. There are some tails here to our vector shapes. You can get rid of them fairly easily if you command click on the face, you invert that selection. Where are you? There you are. Okay. Maybe create a new layer at the top. And you can fill that with black. And then I'll get rid of the tails for you. And there you are. That's our vector shape, so play around with it and create some great vector composites yourself. I've been Gavin Steele, thank you very much.